Cheers, fans. A quick um, game analysis uh, between Magnus Carlsen with White and Badu on Birkeson, a 17-year-old player from Iceland, rated 2160, from the Isle of Man Cup um, round one in 2017. So Carlsen played the English, and after knight f6, knight c3, e6, d4, bishop b4, e3, Carlsen, knight f3, b6. We've reached a sort of um, Queen's Indian game, bishop d3, bishop b7, castle d5, c takes, e takes, and knight e5. So um, in this position it's a very common plan to um, exchange these pawns and then bring the knight in. Black usually um, in this position doesn't want to take with the knight because um, it gives white the resource to exchange. And then if bishop takes, push e4. And if bishop doesn't take, then we have reached a kind of similar to position, just that um, this black bishop here is not able to exchange itself against the knight anymore. So um, after e takes, uh, black retakes with the pawn, and now knight e5. White's idea is to um, position the knight here on e5, uh, here on e5 and um, get a strong position asset like this. Black plays knight e7, wanting to exchange this knight, but white plays um, f5, uh, f4 to, um, to protect this knight. And if um, black now wanted to retake here, white is happy to do so because it opens um, the rook with an attack on the king. Um, that's also why um, Black's next move is questionable. Why do you think knight e4 is a bad move in this position? Well, um, white can simply exchange this knight and play bishop c4. And this coordinates well um, the bishop on this diagonal with this knight on e5 because now exchanging this knight becomes even worse because the bishop and the rook coordinate against the pawn on f7. For example, um, if black wanted to neutralize this with bishop d5, white can increase pressure even more with the queen, hitting the f7 square and the bishop. Um, if white exchanges here, the bishop has to retreat, and now queen c6 highlights the weaknesses both on c7 and e4. And um, White simply has the plan to play bishop d2 and bring the rook over to put pressure on the c7 uh, pawn and then at an opportune moment take the e4 pawn. Okay, um, but if not knight e4, what would have been a better move? Uh, in view of the variation that we've seen, c5 would have been much better. If white, for example, continues bishop d2, black can now play knight e4. And now after exchanging, bishop c4, the same variation as we have seen. Black now can play bishop takes d2 and exchange this knight now. And now in this position, um, black again can play bishop to d5. And this position is different from the one that we have seen because the queen is on the worst square on d2, cannot come in so quickly, um, cannot go to c3 anymore to increase pressure. And also this pawn is now advanced on c5 and cannot become a weakness. So best for white is to exchange here, and then in this position maybe even black gets pressure on d4. Okay, um, and again, um, taking here simply opens up the rook as well. So, but Carson uh, got the nice bishop on c4, and in this position black did at least not exchange knight, but the cost of this is that the knight is now really strong here on e5. The queen e7, the game continued a3, harassing this bishop, which drops back before grabbing some space, knight f6, bishop e2, all of white's moves now look very good, c6, queen c2, um, eyeing the potentially weak e4 pawn, b5, Pushing back the bishop, but maybe also making this pawn a bit weak. And now a5. So what's the idea behind a5? Let's have a look. Kaisen played h3. 
And how can black get equality now? The game continued eight takes, eight takes, and now black could have gotten equality by playing uh, rook a to c8. Simply dropping the rook back and keeping the pressure on the b4 pawn up because this pawn here is now weak. Um, instead, um, Padu on the young player played bishop takes, grabbing the pawn immediately, but this allows white to take with the rook. The point is that black cannot retake with the rook because the um, f7 square has to be guarded. So after bishop takes, rook a1, um, white grabs the open a5 with this rook. And in a way, um, this is how white gets a, a positional advantage thanks to this knight and this bishop because that makes the rook stay here and that allows white to take the a5. Now black played knight d5. And quick tactical quiz, what's um, a tactical blow here? How can white get material advantage? Okay, white can very favorably um, sacrifice an exchange here. After rook takes, rook takes, white is an exchange down. But as compensation for this, white gets one pawn with the attack on the knight. Knight has to move back. Check. And three pawns. And white was one uh, was down one pawn. But now white is up two pawns. And as compensation for the exchange, white has a strong attack on the king and two pawns, which is sufficient. White also has, thanks to this um, exchange, white also has the bishop pair, which is especially good against this rook, because these two bishops together, they um, once this pawn advanced, they both participate in the attack on the king, but they also make sure that this rook cannot enter here, which um, very much, um, uh, which is a feature of the bishop pair against the rook, it very much decreases the value of this rook. Also, this queen here is super strong, eyeing the king, but also um, eyeing the a8 rook. So in this particular position, um, this knight is bound to guard this rook. And again, if this pawn moves forward, the queen is also attacking this bishop. So super strong compensation for the exchange. And you can see here with the engine, white is actually now uh, much better. The game continued rook f8, trying to cover some of the weaknesses. And now d5 taking advantage of the asset that white has the extra pawns and also hitting the bishop and threatening potentially uh, this double attack. Black tried to bail out with rook f7, but knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, and now um, white is even uh, up material even more. Um, white is now up two pawns straight because after knight takes, um, Black has the tactical liability of the back rank weakness, and after queen b8 check, queen g8 only move. How does white now win a pawn and transform into a one ending? Bishop takes g7 check, king takes only move, and now the queen hits the, knight, the king and the knight, double attack. And now um, white has a ending with queens versus king, where the king is a bit weaker, and two pawns. So now white only needs to exchange queens to be safe. The game continued, still a few more moves. But essentially now the queen is connecting with the pawns, and it's only a question of time until the queens get exchanged. And Badu on Bickinson resigned here. So a cute little game. Um, Carson played it very safe. There were some tactical um, lines um, that he could have played even sharper and stronger, but um, I think um, he was playing it really cool. Um, of course, he's the strongest, greatest player in the world. And after this knight e4, he really got this asset of the bishop coordinating well with the knight. And then after um, rook takes, bishop takes, he was coordinating with this asset to get the a file. And then um, exchanging, uh, sacrificing this exchange for a very strong compensation 
and then um, going into a one ending um, very smoothly. Excellent game, and you know, let's not forget um, Black was still a player rated 2160, and it's amazing to see with uh, the, the ease with which Carson can just win against a player like this really easily. And um, yeah, I think this is really interesting to watch. Um, I hope you could learn a little bit, and um, see you again next time.